It's the Daily Doug. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Doug back with you for another edition of the Daily Doug. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I think we have a fun one today. I think you'll enjoy this. So a few days ago, uh, there was somebody on uh, the channel that said, you know, you really got to do a song by Radiohead. And I'm like, Radiohead, why, why have I not done a song by Radiohead yet? Uh, I, I am a, what, what I would call a casual fan of Radiohead. I have uh, uh, heard their music, I, I, I enjoy their music, I respect their music, but I'm not a connoisseur of their music. I don't listen to their music often, and they're not really in my rotation. And quite, quite frankly, I don't know why. It's great stuff, but uh, I should start branching out some more. Anyway, uh, when uh, this person suggested Radiohead, it made me think of uh, an event that I was at 10 years ago. And uh, the story is uh, Megan and I got to see Radiohead perform for free on the Colbert Report, Stephen Colbert's old show on Comedy Central. In the summer of 2011, we had gotten tickets for a taping, a live taping of the Colbert Report, and we had gotten a, an email a couple days prior saying that uh, the taping schedule had changed because they had booked Radiohead and they decided they were gonna do an entire hour show instead of just a half hour, so the taping was gonna be from this time to a longer time. Is that okay with you? We're like, yes, <laughs> that would be just fine with us, thank you. So we go into New York, we have a great time, we're in line, we get into the, to the taping, and they, they taped it out of sequence for how the show aired. Uh, they did all of the, uh, the interview and monologue stuff first, and then they reset the stage and, and set the band up. And they played a mini concert, they played like eight songs. I think they aired uh, three or four, uh, and maybe put a couple more out as web exclusives, but uh, it was such a fun time. That's the only time I've ever got to hear Radiohead live and uh, really became uh, an entrenched fan of theirs just by seeing them go about their business uh, from being on and performing in the moment to just getting ready and how they treated people, how they expressed their ideas in the interviews, uh, their causes that they work toward, uh, really stand up people. So I'm a Radiohead fan. Um, and when I uh, was trying to figure out what song to do today, I was me remembering specifically a song that they did on that uh, show, but I couldn't remember the name of it. Uh, it was just this hauntingly beautiful song, and I couldn't remember it because it's been so long since I heard it. So I looked up uh, the on YouTube some clips from that show uh, a decade ago, and um, I, I found the one I was looking for. The song is called The Daily Mail, and that's the one that we're gonna do today. So this is not a true reaction. I have heard the song, I've heard the song live, but it's been a long, long time since I was, um, you know, reintroduced to this piece of music. So I hope you guys like it. Um, when I went to the, uh, the video just to spot check it from the Colbert Report, the audio quality was okay. They have a brass ensemble with them and you couldn't really hear them very well. But I found this other version with, uh, that was recorded in the same year, 2011, uh, from the basement. And they have the brass ensemble with them uh, as I spot checked and the, the audio sounds really great. So this is the one we're gonna go with. This is Radiohead from 2011 singing the Daily Mail. Here we go. When the drums come in, it's just the drums. So, um, Daily Mail. And then the full band. Um, Over the background. So we still, we still, still play the top really quietly then, is that, would that be all right? Yeah. Play, play the top really I just quietly. love uh, when they add the brass. I think it makes it sound so cool. We should do a Brass Against song, by the way. Uh, if you've not heard of them, I'll do one of theirs as well. I love his dedication in the moment. 
that he commits to. We'll talk about this chord. Moon is a rock on the mountain. The lunatics have taken over the asylum. Waiting on the rapture. I think that's between verses. Singing we I'm going to stop there. Uh, it's gorgeous, isn't it? It's so intimate, uh, and you can only imagine where it's going to go once you add all the instruments in. Um, this is interesting to me because it sounds sad to me, but guess what? It's He starts in a major key. Uh, it's D major. And the interesting thing that, that, that he's doing with this progression is it's basically just a static D chord. And then he adds a descending scale from the C sharp to the B to a B flat. So this B flat chord is strange. It's D major, D major over B flat. If I was thinking of it as a B flat chord, it would be B flat augmented with a major seventh. So you've got that neat sound. It just makes it sound otherworldly. You've got two perfect fifths. Um, a major third apart and it makes just an interesting sort of um, uh, sound that is sort of uh, at odds with itself which I think is one of the underscoring uh, themes of this particular song we're going to back up just a hair and, uh, and keep rolling Waiting on the rapture. Such a unique color to his voice. To the daily mail, together, mm, see. together. You made a pig's ear. You made a part I promise I'll get back to it I have to rewind that uh, to figure out what that was what that was they were in C for a second they went down to, from that D um, can't remember how they got to C but they and then it was like this like this D flat to E flat I can't remember exactly what it was um, there's a C there's a B minor. Yeah, C, D flat, E flat. Wow. So, E flat, then down to D flat, and then an F chord. Down to C, D flat, E flat, with the E flat at top.
Okay, so that's how unbelievable is that? We're backing up because we got to hear some of that again. That progression, that up a minor third, and then down a step, and up a minor third, and then a half step. So they take that progression at the end. This is in C right now. They're going to move the B flat. They're going to move the whole thing. There it is. B flat. Up a minor third, down a half step. Up a minor third, then a half step. And then they end in B flat. Too cool. All right. Let's move on. Yeah. That's just the neatest bit that that I've heard in a while. That that's that's totally rad. Um. So. As a, you know, from, from a composer's point of view, that progression is really, really interesting because they've got a static note. We're going to go back to C. They've got that static note up there that's just hanging out and being harmonized with all of this moving stuff underneath it. So you've got this open C chord. Then it's C, uh, e, C minor over E flat. Um, then a D7, D dominant 7, D F sharp A C. And then an F natural to bring that F chord back in. And then that F sharp goes against the C and goes back down. It's just a total thing, a uh, total cool thing. Pretty cool. And, and, and then we forget the beginning, which started on that major chord. It goes down to that B flat chord. Um, or that D over B flat. The, the B flat comes from D's parallel minor, but um, that's such a hauntingly open and, and conflicted sound. And uh, these guys are extremely smart uh, and worldly. They know what they're talking about. I believe that they're setting that sound up to be in conflict with itself because they're talking about society and just the goodness of humanity and what they think the Daily Mail <laughs> in, in England stands for and, and, and what they think of its role in society. And I think it's quite painfully obvious, uh, their, their perspective. And quite, um, you know, for, for one, I'm here for it. So um, that was a lot of fun. I've got to start listening to more Radiohead. Um, if you uh, have suggestions from their catalog, uh, not creep. <laughs> because it's way overdone, but other stuff that uh, that you think that I would uh, groove on with them, let me know, all right? So, oh man, that was so much fun. It's good to be back here at the piano, and uh, we will see you next time on The Daily Doug. <laughs>